Hello my friend and welcome to day three of Painting the Wilderness Seascapes. Today we are going to the beach. Finally, we're going to paint the ocean from the perspective of, you know, you're sitting on the beach, your toes in the sand, so you can see the beach, you can see the sea foam as the water kind of laps up onto the sand, and you can see the ocean and the sky. We're going to build up all of those layers into one scene using the principles that we've already been practicing, right? The order of operations, contrast, layers, wet on wet, wet on dry, all of those things, just using some more fun tropical colors for a magical day in the sand. So let's dive right in. Let's head to the beach. In this project, we are going to paint a calm lapping ocean waves scene from the view of the beach and similar to what we've been practicing we're, just, we're gonna use just a few simple layers in order to piece together the sky the ocean and the sand and even capture all of those tricky transition spaces like where the water is kind of lapping up onto the sand and changing it a slightly different color. So this one's going to be a lot of fun. And uh, the colors I'm mostly using are phthalo turquoise, Prussian blue, burnt umber, and yellow ochre, and white gouache. So if you want to gather all of your supplies, let's get started. First things first, we're going to get our whole paper wet as honestly, most of the projects we are going to do, if not all, will require a wet on wet base layer, right? We're gonna do a blendy base layer where we're just blocking out the different sections of the painting that we're going to do. So uh, I'm just using clean water here with a size 10 brush, which I find to be most helpful. And as we get started, remember that with a blendy base layer, you want to make it lighter than you expect you're going to need because with watercolor, it's easy to make something darker if you need it to be slightly darker. It is much, much more difficult to make something lighter if you have made it too dark. So especially as we're kind of practicing building these layers a little bit at a time, Starting lighter than you expect is going to be your best bet. So the first thing that I'm going to do now that I have um, my layer wet is to paint the sand area. And in order to get that kind of sandy color, I mixed a little bit of burnt umber with some yellow ochre and a tiny bit of white gouache in there to kind of make it like a creamy color. And that is what I'm using for the sand. So yellow ochre, burnt umber, white gouache for the sand. Then I'm getting some phthalo turquoise and adding a lot of water to it. And I'm going to put that right in the middle of my paper. And I'm doing this all in the same layer specifically because I want them all to kind of be blended together. So with the phthalo turquoise, I'm gonna start in the middle and then paint down into the sand. And this is because I do want that really light, almost kind of green layer in between the sand and the blue, right? When I mix the blue and bend the turquoise down into the sand, I want that layer because, you know, that's where it's gonna look like the water is kind of lapping up onto the sand. And then for the top, the sky, we're going to use a very light value Prussian blue. So, we have Prussian blue, phthalo turquoise, that sandy mixture. And while all of this layer is still wet, I'm going to use a towel to lift the paint in the form of clouds. So you'll see I used a clean towel and I put just like one finger in the towel so that I can press down on it pretty, hot, pretty hard. And I'm lifting I'm pushing down and then lifting in kind of a general shape of clouds. Doing this while the paint is still wet is going to allow like that kind of cloudy outline edge in the actual paint. And 
you might think like, well, isn't that cheating? Isn't it cheating to, you're not actually painting clouds, you're just removing paint. And no, it's definitely not cheating. It is a very valid and fun way to achieve a specific result. And it's one of the best ways that I've found to actually form clouds with watercolor. So after you've, uh, after you have created the clouds, I just painted three of them, right? I did one kind of big one coming out them from the side and then two small-ish to medium ones. Uh, then we're going to add shadows because that's how clouds are actually, that's how you see them, right? So the way that I'm going to add shadows is I'm going to uh, get the cloud wet, just the inside of the cloud, and I'm going to make sure the edges of the cloud are still kind of relatively dry, right? Wherever the cloud is wet, that's where the paint is going to go. And so I want to leave just the edges of the cloud dry and then take very, very light value Payne's Gray and just tap them in, tap that Payne's Gray in where the clouds are and then use even more water to kind of push it away and disperse it. And because I didn't let the clouds, because I didn't get the edges of the clouds wet, the, the shadows are gonna stay in the middle and that's exactly where I want them. So now we're gonna start painting the ocean. I dried the sky at this point, and now we're gonna start painting the ocean. And basically what I'm doing is taking fairly light value at first, light value, thalo turquoise and Prussian blue, and just kind of painting horizontal strokes a little bit at a time right on top of where I want the ocean to be. Sometimes I'm painting the horizontal strokes, sometimes I am taking some water and just kind of like feathering down the paint. But it's important to note that this is wet on dry. So I'm painting wet on dry horizontal strokes right now. You can tell that it's wet on dry because it's not going anywhere, right? The paint is staying exactly where I put it. And the reason I'm doing wet on dry is because I do want there to be like movement, right? I do want there to be texture. And so by adding lots of these horizontal, just kind of going back and forth, doing kind of loose zigzag shapes with fairly light value paint over and over again on top of each other, I can create this complex movement for the ocean. And so I'm kind of going back and forth between Prussian blue and phthalo turquoise. And I even added a little bit of Viridian in there, I think, which is, um, which is a cool green color. So Prussian blue, phthalo turquoise, Viridian. And as you're doing this, we, we do wanna create kind of a gradient where the back part of the sea is going to be the darkest. And so we can add, we can make it the darkest at the very end, like that's something we can do at the end. But, you know, as we're, I'm, I'm just kind of randomly putting down spots of green, putting down spots of blue, putting down spots of turquoise, lines of turquoise, all the while, you know, leaving the dry brush texture that's kind of naturally being created because I'm doing the wet on dry technique, right? So it looks like there are some little spots, like some parts of the ocean are lighter, some parts look more green, some parts look more blue. And the way that I achieved that is just by painting those, you know, horizontal, horizontal strokes kind of feathering down in a loose, wide zigzag motion almost and doing them over and over and over again. So the last thing I'm going to do is to make the back of the sea darker because with ocean, with the water, the distance rule that we're trying to keep in mind is that where the water is deepest, that's where it's darker. So we are going to paint just the back along the horizon, a uh, kind of a more pigmented Prussian blue. And because I still want it that blue color, right? And there we go. So we have like, it's really choppy, right? The ocean at this point, it looks pretty choppy. It doesn't look super blended and that's okay. I don't want it to look super blended. I want it to look a little bit choppy. And we're going to add to that texture at this now by adding white gouache. So this is one of my favorite parts. This is one of my favorite things to do um, because it's just, it's a really simple but effective way to bring lapping ocean waves like this to life. So basically I'm taking um, my gouache and I'm not adding any water to it. I'm taking it mostly in its paste form and I'm just adding loose 
really loose kind of curved almost like scalloped edges basically i'm trying to paint sea foam that is coming on the tip of waves so i want these waves to be lapping on top of each other and then i want to add some sea foam to the ocean as well so again no rhyme or reason i didn't put put any of the things anywhere on purpose um but once you have your sea foam both you know, some of it in the ocean and then definitely in kind of lines overlapping each other where the ocean meets the sand, then the cool thing about gouache is you can blend that in so it doesn't have to look so stark. So I'm taking a small size two brush and where the sea foam is on the lapping waves, I'm just kind of taking some clean water and blending the edge up back into the ocean. And then where the sea foam is on top of the water further back, I'm blending it down so that it doesn't look like paint is just sitting on top. It more looks like, you know, like water, like there's lots of light and other things filtering in through this water and just looks a little bit more natural. So the last thing that we're going to do to kind of bring this piece together is add some dimension under the waves. And the way that we're going to do that is we're going to get um, the sand underneath the waves wet. And so in order to be a little bit more precise here, because I don't want to overlap the gouache, you, can, you will reactivate it if you do that. I don't want to reactivate the gouache. So I'm taking my size six brush and you know, fairly carefully, I'm getting it wet just underneath the waves. And then I'm taking some burnt umber and right underneath the waves, I'm adding the burnt umber. So it's like I'm adding a shadow right underneath the waves, right? So it's like, you know, the, the places where the sand is wet and the, where the, uh, the sand is underneath the water, there's a little bit of a shadow there. And so I'm using the wet on wet technique here. That's why I got the sand wet first, right? I'm using the wet on wet technique to make it darkest right underneath the waves and then blending that paint down so that it, it adds dimension without being too harsh, if that makes sense. Like I want there to be a line, so it looks like a line that is blended just underneath the ocean waves, but then I want it to look kind of loose and natural as I'm blending the rest of the paint down into the sand. And I don't want it to be super like um, perfect, right? I want it to be natural. I want it to be imperfect. I want it to look like, you know, some parts of the shadow are different than other parts of the shadow. And I feel like we achieved that. So this is my day at the beach. Um, you know, we started with a very loose blendy layer and then kind of one layer at a time, we focused on different detail elements. The first detail element was the clouds in the sky, right? Where we used a towel to lift the clouds. And by the way, if adding shadow is really intimidating and you try it and it's really messy, you don't have to add a shadow. You can just lift the clouds and have that be fine. That's a perfectly great starting place. If lifting clouds and adding shadow is, is, feels really scary to you, then you don't have to right now. You can practice that later. But we lifted the clouds and then we got it wet just enough so that, you know, the edges of the clouds stayed white and the middle, we could have that very light value panes gray. Then we used different colors overlapping on top of each other with the wet on dry technique to create the ocean. And then we added white gouache for those, you know, sea foam details. And then finally, that last detail of the shadow to kind of tighten all of it together. It's, you know, we're just using very simple details a little bit at a time, but I think it's really effective. And I really love scenes like this because they show you that you can create like scenes don't have to be super complicated. They don't have to have a million steps. You can create really beautiful, complex seascapes using only a few layers. And I think that this beach day project demonstrated that, at least it did for me. So now, <laughs> now that we've finished, um, I, let's do our loved and learned exercise. So in case you haven't seen previous projects or you just need a little bit of a refresher, one of my very, very favorite things to do after I finish project is projects is to think about what I loved 
and then to think about what I learned. And phrasing it in this way helps me not be so critical of myself and it helps me remember to, you know, kind of harvest those tiny moments of wonder, to to keep a snapshot of this experience in my heart so that I can remember it even even after. So uh, let's, I like to think about, you can choose any number, but I like to think about three typically. Three things that I loved, three things that I learned. Um, I really, really loved the soft cloudy blends. I think lifting clouds, especially kind of leaving the outline of the clouds, almost like there's a silver lining of the clouds. It's one of my favorite things to do. Um, I also really loved the green in the ocean by painting just directly Viridian on the ocean. I think it it added uh, some contrasting color and some, like it was a detail that made it really nice for me. And then I always love the shadow underneath the sea foam because I just think that it tightens everything together. It adds, a, it's a tiny element that really makes a big difference. And then things that I learned or, you know, that you can learn from this project gouache can be reactivated after it's dry. And so it's a really handy tool. Um, Sometimes less is more, right? Sometimes simple is the best. And then one thing I think I might do differently next time is um, using the rule of thirds is typically a great way to make, to tighten up compositions. For this one, I kind of did half and half instead of the rule of thirds. And I wish I would have made that a little bit different, but all in all, it's okay. I think it was super fun and I hope you did too.